The prosecutor is saying they intend to seek additional felony charges against a January 6th defendant who was arrested near President Obama's home in Washington, D.C. last week. In court today, prosecutors urged a judge to keep Taylor Toronto behind bars pending trial, warning he is a threat to government officials and the public. They're honing in on one particularly strange incident where Toronto entered an elementary school near Democratic Congressman Jamie Raskin's home on a Sunday and projected a movie about January 6th on the wall. NBC's Ryan Riley has been following this for us and joining us now. Also with us, former D.C. Chief of Homeland Security and Intelligence, Donnell Harvin. Ryan, start us off, if you will, and give us a sense of what took place inside the court today. Yeah, you know, I really think that this is a sort of one of those another th uh, sort of failures of open source intelligence that we've seen um, in this instance, because what we really have originally here is someone who was identified in August of 2021 um, and has clearly been sort of disconnected from reality and posting on social media in the um, in the, you know, year <laughs> and a half since he's been uh, identified. Um, and it was known to be in D.C., was posting about that, was publicly identified as being an individual who is on the so-called Freedom Corner by the D.C. jail. And in fact, had been sort of kicked out of that group or distanced from that group because they thought he was too extreme. These supporters of January uh, 6th def uh, defendants, um, who some of whom believe conspiracy theories about January 6th itself, thought that he was still a little too out there um, and was saying that he didn't believe that Ashley Babbitt was actually killed, that she was an actor, that all the people around him were, uh, were actors that day. And you know, this was someone who was physically right there when uh, Ashley Babbitt uh, was shot and seems to think that he's in some sort of Truman show where everything going on around him um, is not real. Um, you know, it's an individual, when I talk to uh, someone who was associated with the county Republican Party after his identification, um, they were telling me that, you know, he has severe issues with PTSD. This is a, mm -hmm. a, this is a veteran who, um, you know, obviously went through a lot and I think obviously needs some, some clear mental health, uh, has some clear mental health issues going on. And that's something that the magistrate judge focused on today, making sure that he gets that help behind bars. Um, but it's clearly someone that there needs to be some restrictions on, given he has, you know, 18 guns at home, in addition to the two that were found on him near Obama. Obama's residence when he was searching for some sort of tunnels because Donald Trump posted on his Truth Social account uh, an address associated with uh, Barack Obama. And he was, you know, so Toronto shows up and is looking for tunnels, tunnels connecting uh, Obama's house to other places. So, you know, it's really, it's a really a lot of disturbing behavior. But what he's actually charged with right now is just four misdemeanor offenses in connection with January 6th. So the standard for him, for holding him behind bars is pretty tough there because, you know, he's not charged with a felony uh, offense. He's not charged with the actual recent conduct. He's just charged with these four standard misdemeanors, and most people who are charged with those four standard misdemeanors were sent home and allowed uh, to remain um, free be until their trial, um, which makes sense. But in this case, obviously, there are a lot of these extenuating circumstances. So I think Wednesday is when we'll ultimately find out what's going to happen in this case and if prosecutors are going to bring charges, more serious charges, either in connection with January 6th itself or in connection with his more recent actions, his troubling actions as he's been living out of a van in the D.C. area.